Okay, so I think we've got a good amount of people here, so we can probably get started. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Diploma Honours Conversation. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Manishay Burgis, and I'm the head of the A's Public Programme, and that includes lectures, exhibitions, and other special projects for a diverse range of audiences. And I also teach one of the diploma units at the A. Um, so this event is one of my favorite annual occurrences. Um, in addition to working and teaching here, I also studied at the AA. And I remember sitting kind of in your position several years ago during my own introduction week, watching the honor students from the previous year present um, with a mixture of excitement and panic in my stomach about whether I'd ever be able to do a project like this. Um, but what you'll find is that they all probably felt the same way and are here today as AA graduates, having just graduated um, last Friday, ready to discuss their projects with you. Um, so to tell you a little bit about Diploma Honours, it's the highest award you can achieve upon completion of the five-year accredited program. Um, up to one-fifth year per diploma unit is nominated to present for honours at the end of each academic year. And then on the kind of penultimate Friday of the year, they all do a 10-minute presentation that needs to convince the panel of diploma tutors of the value, relevance, and premise of their project. And then the tutors all go away and vote in secret and um, the honors projects are decided, followed by much celebration, which hopefully this year will return to the AA Terrace. So um, this year, I mean, over the past year, four year, four projects were awarded diploma with honors and um, that really manifests the breadth of interest contained within the school. So Jumana's project created a new platform to produce an alternative Palestinian narrative that reframes the identity of the diasporic community through their collective memories, rituals, and practices. Philip responds to different crises that are currently ravaging the city of Beirut, rethinking the nature of infrastructures of care by building a network of decentralized interventions on small, inconstructible parcels dispersed across the urban fabric. Um, Shah's project tries to reconnect the people of the area of Becca through se secular means, identifying the fabric of the land itself as the unifying feature to be rediscovered. And Zena explores the implications of the kafala system within the architecture and urban environment of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, working to speak alongside rather than speak about a population that has not been heard. So um, I guess they'll tell you a bit more in this conversation about the units within which they produce these projects as well as their process. And, um, and today, Philip, Shah, and Zaina are here to present their projects to you. Unfortunately, Jumana is unable to make it since she had to drop her mom to the airport. But since she was my student last year, I'm happy to answer any questions about her project that you might have. And um, since all four of them were such good friends, I'm sure that Shah, Philip, and Zaina can help me do that too. Um, and while in the past, this event has usually been a series of presentations that we would do in the lecture hall, since this, from the past year, all the presentations can be watched online. Instead, we thought today we'd have a conversation around kind of how they worked on this project, the common themes they share, and the future trajectories of each of these projects. So um, if you haven't already, I encourage you to visit the exhibition of exemplary work from the past academic year that can be viewed online. I'll post the link in the chat. Um, and otherwise, it's also in the AA bar on a series of screens as a set of um, showreels, but you're only able to access the buildings if, uh, currently if you're a staff or student. Um, but uh, the, these showreels show not just the work of these four amazing students, but also um, the work of the recipients of um, commendations, awards and prizes, as well as exemplary projects at the end of third year and also from the taught postgraduate program. So um, I guess without any further ado, we'll move to the conversation portion and like welcome our honors graduates back to the AA. Um, so I guess thank you guys for joining. Um, and um, we're really excited to get to speak to you in more detail about your projects, which I saw obviously being presented at the end of the year. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to find out more about how you worked on them. So maybe to start, each of you could briefly summarize <clears throat> your your project as well as, as well as well as its relationship to the brief of the unit that you were in. So maybe Zena, you can start to talk about Diploma 13. Hi everyone. So I was in Diploma 13 last year with Merve and George. And uh, we started off the brief, we started off the year by getting an apparatus. Um, so it could be anything from a residency card to a door or whatever it is. So I chose a residency card. And from there, you start exploring the implications it has uh, in the nation. So I will share the screen. Uh, can you see? Um, 
sorry. Yeah, can you see my screen? Okay, great. So um, the subject I was working on was the kafala system. And what intrigued me to start working on this topic was that there were reforms uh, right before, uh, in, in the beginning of last year of the kafala system being uh, demolished. But with time, uh, I realized that it was excluding the most vulnerable, which was the domestic workers. So um, I started analyzing this tool right here, which is a residency card. And from there, I, I divided my sites into four. My home, the ministry's quarantina, which is informal settlement in Jeddah, and the entirety of Jeddah as a whole and how it functions. So this project was really personal to me because it started from my own, my very own home and seeing how, depending on your hierarchy under this residency card, uh, you're treated very differently in, this, in Jeddah. And so my film, my film encompassed uh, all the rooms of the houses that um, each experienced it very differently. And also looking at how uh, the domestic workers uh, how they live and how they experience the space, as well as undocumented workers. Um, and my project was mainly looking into spatializing testimonies from a, a community that has not been heard. And I worked into the undocumented with the undocumented workers in Jetta. Now they uh, are they are one of the major reasons uh, for the city to function as a whole. And yet they're the most invisible. And if they were caught as well, they would be deported. So I wanted to see how much they impact. I wanted to show how much they impact the country and how they function, as well as how they view the city. I'm going to share just a bit of the film that I worked on, if that's OK, Merve. Uh, Merve, <laughs> manager. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can you yeah, see this film? Uh, no, we can still see your PD. OK. Here. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So from my home, I started looking into the city and dividing it from this microcosm model. Um, so the reason why I don't, I didn't upload my film is right now there are many explosions of undocumented workers. And so it's really sensitive to post anything and including the interviews and so on. So each space, uh, such as, for example, I was looking at the airport, um, a female or a, doc a domestic worker must get um, per uh, a permit from their sponsor. And so I was showing within my film the spaces that are visible and half visible and invisible uh, to uh, depending on your position under the residency card, um, how you're treated. So sorry, this is just a quick snippet of how where, what I did. And I started to extract the spaces that are not visible to me and also looking at the half visible spaces, which would be drawn in the lines, which will come up now. <laughs> there. And so it was mainly looking at how the city is viewed depending on where you sit under the kafala system. And it's really important this topic right now because everyone's aware of the kafala system, but no one knows uh, the impact it has on the most vulnerable. Or if they do, it's not spoken about because uh, the media here is quite firm on keeping everything good and, you know, it's perfect. So it was really important to me to really uh, show the reality of the state here in Jeddah. And hopefully this is the first step. The first step is knowing what's happening and being aware. And the next step is doing something about it, whether it is helping the spatial inequalities or raising more awareness and so on. So that's just um, a quick idea of what I work on this year. <laughs> Thanks so much, Zena. Um, I guess, Philip, do you want to go next and talk about DIP9 and a summary of your project? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so, um, yeah, so DIP9 last year started with a spatial crisis at the beginning of the year. Um, I personally didn't have a, um, a spatial crisis. Um, I had more of a social crisis, uh, which was um, basically unraveling in Beirut. And through the social crisis, I kind of um, brought up um, a special opportunity to kind of tackle that. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you uh, really quickly about um, the way I approach the project. Uh, I don't have anything to show, but um, I mean, I guess you can you can see that on projects review or um, the, the exhibition. Um, so, um, so my project um, delved into the different crises that Beirut is currently facing and proposes a network of civic infrastructures um, to introduce care to the population. 
So to give a bit of context, um, you might know that the city had was hit last summer by the third largest explosion ever recorded in an urban context. And today the country is victim of one of the three most important economic crises uh, since the 1850s, so 150 years uh, in the world. Um, so in this context, the project aims at introducing care to the population that is today left to survive on its own by the state. This through a conversation with the very dynamic civil society in Lebanon in order to create spaces where people can both provide care and be received with care, with care across Beirut. Um, so when I say civil society, I mean um, all the different actors that actively work and fight for the well-being of the population and the sustenance of a healthy, uh, a healthy society. So this includes uh, the different charities and NGOs that support the population, the different collectives and social enterprises that empower um, different academics and medias that educate or other individ individuals that have or want to become actors of change within, within their communities. Um, so with the complete absence of the state, these actors are today the ones that know best what the population needs. Um, so working with them for the introduction of this care on a large scale is essential. The problem was that today um, they're, they're, um, they're, rest they're restricted to their limited sphere, sphere of, inf of influence. So whether it's a neighborhood or area specific um, or through the virtuality of, the pl of their platforms. So the project um, basically aims at expanding the sphere of influence of, this, of these different actors in order to reach uh, deep within the urban fabric of Beirut and impact a greater number of people. Um, so the proposal is basically a network of small infrastructure and in infrastructures dispersed across um, Beirut for the equal provision of non-commercialized care. So free care for the entire population of the city, regardless of any um, social or religious um, uh, belong uh, belongings. So these infrastructures would be animated by these actors on a rolling basis for, for an introduction of a variety of services so we're talking here about medical or legal consultation, mental health support, cultural or political disruptions, um, et cetera. Um, the design itself is focused on a limitation of both construction and operational costs because of the self-organizing and grassroots nature of the interventions. So for example, steel was chosen as a structural material because it was possible to re recycle scraps from the Beirut port explosions to reduce um, construction co costs. And for example, as well, the facades were designed to reduce, um, to reduce direct sunlight into the spaces to, um, to reduce artificial cooling, um, et cetera. So basically through, um, through these structures, um, uh, the different interventions retained a distinct architectural language that kind of started to signal the presence of care throughout the city and making basically of architecture a, a key ingredient for change um, in the urban fabric of Beirut. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, that's the project itself. Now, the brief of the unit kind of argued for a territorial transformation and institutional adjustments around what the tutor called um, economies of life. So what they referred by economies of life was any type of economy that kind of enhanced common resources so my project itself doesn't really deal with traditional economies that generate profit, economic profit, but it deals with what I think is a bit more important, which is um, an economy of care uh, across the city. So uh, for the well-being of society, um, for a healthier social and economic environment in the city. Um, so yeah, I think that that was me and my project. Great, and then moving to Shaha to talk about DIP17 and your project. Hi. Um, uh, yeah, I wasn't. I feel like we're alone in the room because I, I can't see anyone's face. It would be nice to see some people just to, I don't know, be a bit familiar. Um, anyway, I did Dip 17 in AA this year after having done. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> um, uh, I did Dip 17 this year with Theo and Dora. Uh, and the, the unit starts with a material. Um, study and so you basically start the unit by choosing a material uh, going straight into uh, studying this material in terms of its properties in terms of uh, its uh, relationship its history its socioeconomic uh, issues environmental issues and all that and then uh, i think this the tutors really made sure that we went out of our rooms during that year 
And so we had to go uh, to a field of extraction. So what I did was I, I chose the material clay, so earth clay, uh, and really studied it in depth, went to a field of extraction and studied kind of the chain of how it goes from the extraction to the built environment uh, and kind of identified some flaws. Um, and then after that, what we do is a study of form. So it is a unit where you design a lot. So you start designing straight away. Uh, quite intuitively, you learn programs, um, you sketch, you show them, you, you discuss design, and then a site is introduced. And so for the site, uh, I chose a site which is my hometown in Lebanon, um, in the Bekaa Valley. And since the unit deals with uh, community projects that are uh, at the intersection of landscape, art, and architecture, uh, I decided to move the attention from Beirut, as Philip was just talking about, uh, and move to the countryside. Uh, because of, I think, the situation that was happening in, in Beirut to Lebanon, I, there was a movement back to the countryside, so I decided to take this movement and kind of see what I could do with it. Um, and so going there, I did some research uh, based on the community, the way they build, what they do, the activities, the surrounding, the landscape. Uh, and my project lies basically in reconnecting the people by doing a community project, but also encouraging the, um, uh, the venture into the landscape with walks and smaller intervention across the landscape. Uh, and so taking the site plus the material, I had done some research and it, it is a material that is native from the area. Uh, not only the area in Lebanon, but also Syria, Palestine, everything that surrounds it. It's a material that bound people together at one point in history before um, a lot of problems that there is in the area there. Uh, and so looking back at the earth vernacular of this area, I also looked at contemporary um, building constructions and how I could adapt this to the village. Um, and so the, the project was a community project where uh, the activities were, are based on uh, domestic activities that are done in the village. So as to not really alienate the people of the village, so include everyone. And it's a project that is like the site is at the border of the village and the landscape. So it's kind of a step towards the landscape. Um, and it consists of uh, programs uh, that are very familiar to them. So cooking, um, uh, learning spaces, uh, hammam, uh, and, and the project is uses a construction technique, which is kind of uh, pushing a bit forward the, the clay extraction. So making the site an extraction site and moving and molding and sculpting the ground on site with the machines that already exist. Um, and so I think in that sense, it responds to the unit brief. Uh, what else do we do? I, I think we, in the unit, they encourage, the tutors encourage us to think about the democratization of a, of a building method. And so in that case, for me, it was uh, building vaults, building brick vaults with the brick that is extracted on site. So this whole cycle of extraction and building on the same site with the firing and with everything that goes um, within it. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone has any more specific questions. I think uh, no. you can watch the YouTube uh, presentations. I don't have any visuals to show. Maybe um, we could share um, the links to our projects review projects. Yeah, yeah. So if you, um, up the, in the kind of listing for this today's event, there's a link to all of your projects on project review. But as I described, like she couldn't upload her video prior to this because of the sensitive subject matter. That's why she showed a bit more of the visuals associated with it. Um, but uh, I guess like we, uh, David Green actually just asked a question about um, maybe if you each of you could summarize what your research question is, because obviously the, the unit briefs are kind of a, a framework or a jumping off point. But I think in your fifth year, you end up like doing your project as opposed to necessarily the unit's project. And it, the unit brief is just there to guide you along the way. But I don't know if you wanted to just summarize like your, your research question in doing these projects. Um, um, I can start. Uh, yeah. So uh, what my project was looking at was, so after primary research and collecting information about the Kafala system, my project take, took the form of a series of situated testimonies of four migrant individuals. So a foreign worker, uh, a daughter under the state, 
um, a domestic worker and undocumented worker. Um, and all of these are spatialized through a collaborative process in a 3D model that facilitates the shifting in perspectives. Um, and it's an investigation that makes evident the implications of the kafala system into the architecture and urban uh, environment of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, in a nutshell. <laughs> Very good summary. <laughs> Shaha, Philip? Um, yes, so I can, so my research went into, uh, really it started with, because we were dealing with public spaces, it started with studying public spaces in uh, Lebanon. We don't really have this notion of public space that we have in Europe. And so public spaces there tend to be this church square or the mosque, uh, in front of the mosque. And so I was trying to find a way, really a common ground between all these people as in, in order to develop a space which is a secular public space. And so it went into the program, the materiality, and what can bind us other than um, religion broadly. Uh, but then there's another question that I had asked myself during the project was um, in terms of construction, uh, was how, how to bypass the quarry really and make the building site a quarry itself. So kind of a cycle uh, and have to reuse and develop a system on the site itself. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I mean, for me, um, I mean, I'm going to kind of repeat that. Um, my project initially was a social, um, a social problem before becoming an architectural project. So, I mean, I started the year um, questioning the idea of resilience in Lebanon because, I mean, everyone keeps saying that, oh, the Lebanese are, the Lebanese are so resilient, they can withstand anything, blah, 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 blah. And I was really angry at that because, I mean, I was in a mental state that was, um, I mean, really, really focused on Lebanon and everything was going crazy there. Um, so I started questioning this whole idea, trying to understand how this fits within global geopolitics or um, systems, so neoliberalism, etc. But then, so the, 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 the question that I, that I think that kind of summarizes well the project was um, how to kind of work with grassroots initiatives to introduce change on, uh, on an urban level within a city and specifically here Beirut. Um, and when I talk about change, it's both societal change and political change. So trying to educate the population on their rights, on what uh, the government uh, or the state is supposed to represent and um, what, what, uh, what, um, what rights they have and what, um, I mean, um, what they should be having. Um, so it's a project that is, again, in conversation with all these people. So I went to Beirut, I talked to a lot of people, I talked with urbanists, I talked with the, the people from the municipality, with different charities, NGOs, etc., to kind of craft this whole project that is a project for the people of Beirut itself. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that actually links quite nicely to my next question, which was, I think what was really unique about this year, usually like the projects that get awarded honors are quite wildly different. And while your projects are different, and especially in the context they deal with and in the issues they're engaging with, there was a kind of um, a kind of unifying characteristic in that they all worked with kind of people or landscapes under threat. And, um, and often with really unfolding situations that, um, sometimes over the course of the year became quite like, you know, heated. And uh, I know that was the case for Jumana um, working with Palestine. But I think for all of you, um, I was curious as to like how you each, I mean, you've touched on it a bit already in your answers, but how you each came to select these topics to work on. And then also the challenges um, you faced in dealing with like un such urgent and unfolding situations. Um, and maybe, yeah, maybe you could each speak a bit more to that. I don't know, Philip, since you were just talking about it, maybe you want to start. Oh, yeah, I could. Yeah, I could. I could continue. Um, um, I mean, for me, it wasn't really a choice. I mean, I was kind of forced into this thing because of, I mean, where I was uh, emotionally and mentally um, dealing with such a dramatic and urgent situation is, I mean, in my opinion, at least it was quite uh, draining emotionally. But I mean, as well, it's, I think it's the most rewarding thing ever, because in the end, uh, you come up with a project that, I mean, in my case, at least, um, was quite well received. Um, and and um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the main challenges for me in my case, the, at the beginning, I think when, like, I'll, I'll talk a bit from, um, from a unit point of view, 
my tutors didn't really know how to direct me because I had such a such a conceptual and um, weird thing going on for probably like most of first term. Um, but then it kind of um, evolved into something much more architectural. And then it got, it, it kind of picked up um, quite, quite easily. Um, problem, the problem um, I kind of, I didn't have any problems um, developing the project itself. But I mean, if I were to kind of ground the project even more, if I were to continue working on this project, I think the main challenges would be um, the authorities in Lebanon. Um, so the state not wanting a project like this to happen. So um, I've been I've been talking with a lot of people on the ground in Lebanon, some people that find interest in the project. And um, the main the main challenge we're facing is that if, for example, the municipality do doesn't allow a project like, like this to happen, it will just not happen. So it's it's all about navigating um, this 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 uh, complication. And I can kind of the way I kind of dealt with this is I don't usually put all my cards on the table for everyone to see. So when I talk with the municipality, I specifically talk about the architecture. I don't talk about um, about the political aspect of the project. I talk about the humanitarian, and this is how I, the, the the guy I spoke with kind of um, went for it. He's like, "Oh, that's super interesting. The the governor of Beirut is going to let you do that because I mean, it's humanitarian. It's so good." Then in the end, he doesn't know that. I just want to kick them all out. So, yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's. Um, Answer. Yeah, but I think it's a real skill that we all have to develop, like to, yeah. to speak to these different people around the table. We need to develop like different languages or different ways of addressing things so that we can actually get people to participate in this conversation. But I guess, I mean, Shaha, you said it earlier about moving from the urban to the rural in your project. So working with a landscape, like what what was that like? And uh, I think, yeah, I think. Continuing from Philip, it, it's quite similar. Our situations was, were quite similar. And, and we were talking at the start of the year and, and we were saying he wants to stay in Beirut. And, and for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to go to the landscape and I'm going to see how it is there. And the same uh, kind of challenges come up because you obviously have to speak to a lot of people, but then it's like on a different scale. So I spoke to geologists, I spoke to anthropologists and, and there it was much, it was very exciting because these are people that also kind of uh, dream. So it was less of the authorities per se, um, which it, it, I spoke to some people of the authorities and it's exactly the same reaction yeah. as Philip. But then I think I also allowed myself to dream with other people. And um, and I think this is what got me excited is, is going back in the past of the vernacular architecture of earth and architecture and how can you, what are the problems there and how can you go with this and move forward with it? while keeping an element of dream i think so i think i i i can completely immerse myself in the situation and i was in it but i also kept telling myself that it is still a university project a, a final year university project i wanted to have one foot like heavy foot in reality where i would speak to people develop something that will stay with me for the future because uh, i think as 50 years we imagine uh, in some way or in some form, keeping on going with this project, but at the same time, finding the opportunities to dream a little bit and to, uh, uh, you know, to be in the representation, to be in the imaginary um, and kind of see the hope, I guess, in our projects, which is what was very driving for the whole year. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a great moment to like maybe come to you, Zena, To I mean, I guess your site was, just, you know, you said you began in your own home but then scaled up to look at a really kind of politically and socially charged um, topic of the of a system that's really failing so many right now. And what was that like? Um, so I think Philip and Shah has said oh, it's actually quite similar because um, you can't stay silent when topics like these emerge. You have to discuss it. And what we were blessed with, I know there were many issues happened this year, but COVID really allowed us to stay home and actually study where we are. Um, and so I think we all took the opportunity of really analyzing the space we're in. And um, the challenges, of course, were that I think in most of our cases, it was conducting primary research. There's not much research done with what we were trying to do. So it's... Uh, 
being quite selective with who you're talking. So in my case, when I was working in the informal settlement and working with undocumented workers, there were specific areas we could only go to and there was a specific attire that I should wear so I wouldn't attract attention or they. So there were so many calculations to ensure that everything is done undercover. And like Philip said, when we, when I talk to another group of people, I'd be very selective and just include the architecture part and not include the whole social issue and the social impact. Um, but it is, like Shah has said, it's, fifth year is an opportunity to continue after we graduated our project. And we didn't do this to pass or anything. We're doing this to actually impact to where we, we're living and hopefully improve on it. And um, our projects are just the first step in raising awareness and educating on the rights, like Philip is saying, and Shaha working with ingredients that are already present in the countryside, uh, in the, sorry, in the villages. So we're all using the same language of where we live, but amplifying it and hopefully finding solutions. So I don't know if that answered the question. <laughs> No, definitely. I think it's really important. And that actually brings me to the question on like the role of the architect. And I think you guys have touched on this about like where you talk about like the conventional architectural parts of your project. But I would argue that the, the social and political dimensions are also equally architecture. Um, and I think it's important to advocate that the architect plays a role in, in you know, addressing some of these issues, crises, um, you know, systemic problems and failures. Um, and I uh, I was just curious how each of you see your role as a, I think, Shaha, you touched on it really nicely with the heavy foot in reality and the other still being allowed to dream. Um, but like, I think as an architecture student in your fifth year, you're on this kind of threshold between you know, academia and, you know, whatever form your future practice takes. And I was just curious about how you advocate for maybe a different type of role for the architect going forward, but that that's embodied in this project that you did over the past year. And Shaha, maybe you want to start this time. Um, I think the role of an architect, I mean, if we, I think we all spoke about it in terms of uh, facilitating conversations. So, so if, uh, the, for me, let's say if the geologist and the anthropologist and uh, and the caretaker of the village where I was, they are talking about similar things, but then I'm coming to each and every one of them with a similar topic. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, joined them together. And it is what brought them to the same room and brought the conversation to the table, which is a conversation that is less about architecture per se, like mm -hmm. uh, a space, but more about um, a possibility of a of a new vernacular, let's say, or of a of a of a new excitement in the countryside because it's been kind of dead for for a while, and so I think in that sense the role of an architect as a I mean uh, having a conversation with different people. So I think as architects, it's very important to always mm -hmm. speak and converse and collaborate with people that you would have never thought just um, bring them together and see what comes up. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I completely, completely agree with Shah. I mean, um, I, I, my role in this project was similar to her role in her project where um, I think um, the architect kind of create the structure for these conversations to happen and then kind of anchors the, the whatever, whatever convers conversation um, is happening around that project, anchors that into um, into reality, into the urban fabric, or like the the, the rural, um, or uh, yeah, the landscape, or anything else. Um, in a way, um, we bring these conversations together. We kind of shape the conversations as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. It's it's as you said, Manisha. It's um, all of it is architecture, um, and that not just the manifestation, the architectural manifestation itself at the end. Um, it it materializes things, I think, um, in a way um, that touches the population in their in their context. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I guess you you touched on this in the last question, but it would be good to hear you elaborate on it. I personally, for me, before diploma, I had a like a specific image of what architecture should be and what when I graduate, what architecture would mean. But after this year and after seeing the diploma honors, it's just 
open my mind to what architecture is. And it's exactly like bringing conversation to life. And essentially with my project, it's not my project. It's everyone who helped me. And this is their project. This is uh, all the undocumented workers who didn't have a voice, who still don't have a voice. And all I did and all the architect should do is materialize and visualize this conversation. Um, and so like Shahan Phillips said beautifully, like it's just bringing the conversation to life and hopefully it's just seeing what comes up after it. And it was great to see because I've been in the AA since foundation and the diploma honors this year is different than any year I've seen. So it's great that these kind of projects are being recognized and just, I can't wait to see what the next step is. I have to say, I'm really excited that your projects are recognized. And I think it's um, a testament to how how much you guys cared about them. But also, I think after a really crazy year, it felt reassuring to think that we as architects can actually engage and maybe do something to, to try and, and intervene in these difficult situations. Um, there's another question from the audience, from um, Mashad, who has asked, um, if you had the chance to extend, continue, um, and take your projects further to um, give greater awareness to a larger community. How would you do it? And what would what would you highlight more than other other aspects of your project? And also, what tools would you use? Which actually links nicely into a conversation into a question I was going to ask you all about the role of media in your projects. Because I mean, maybe because we were online, but also um, because of how how much it um, it can immerse people within each of you kind of made a film in different ways. But also when you make a kind of film, you're also thinking of the audience for who that's for. So I guess, yeah, thinking about which bits would you develop further and what tools would you use, but then maybe also the role of media in your in your project and, and who the audience is. Um, Zena, do you want to start? Sorry. Um, so uh, that's a really good question and something I'm still trying to figure out. Um, but I think right now what's been most effective in progressing the project is uh, communicating with architects, young architects around uh, and just uh, first of all, raising awareness of the topic. Also, what I've done personally is I've shown my project. I haven't shown them to any of the officials, of course, or um, any let's say senior architects, but what I've done is I've gone to universities here in Saudi and presented my work and seen how it would be received. So you really need to, depending on your project, you really need to see what um, group of people that is really gonna take in your project and um, like hopefully take the next step of finding solutions. But um, I don't know how to answer this question so much, uh, but I think, of course, it's really important. I think in Philip and Shaha's case, they can probably tell me um, it's really important to share on Instagram. I think that's what's as well with the whole uh, situation in Lebanon the last year. This is how it sparked. And um, so sharing on social media about the issues have really raised awareness. And I'm not sure, maybe you can continue because I don't know so much how to answer this. Um, I, I can continue. I think uh, I think the media and the I mean communication of the project is a, is a bit different. Like I, I think if I was to continue this project, there's a, like the technical aspect that I have I'm already exploring, which is back in the village and with the people. So we have we have found clay and I'm and I'm looking to I am researching uh, clay factories around and I'm seeing if if the, the bricks that I need can be um, manufactured. So in that sense, this is the very real foot that I was talking about. And I think the conversation uh, continues there in a very real and architectural sense in conversation with um, the people of the village. But then I think um, the importance of media, um, I think I took a very deliberate choice to not represent things as they are, to not, I mean, I think as opposed to Philip in his, I think Philip, when he, in, in with his media, he he showed it very realistically because of the nature of his project. I think it was very effective and uh, like perfectly representative of um, the the landscape surrounding. The, it's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I thought, I think I wanted to be a bit more dreamy to as well attract the 
another crowd, which is something that is completely at the opposite of the real. And 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 I think I, I tried to do that in my project of like there is a bit that is very real and there is a bit that is very dreamy in the, in the animation that I did and I think in the in the mediums that I was trying to explore, which were as well new to me. So um, I have enjoyed that. Should I continue? Yeah. Um, yeah. Picking up on that. Um, yeah, I think the choice of media for my project. Um, as Shah said, was to kind of anchor my project in reality. So the visuals I have are quite, um, quite seem quite real in a way to kind of prove to people and show people that this is something that can actually happen. This change that you wanna, that you wanna achieve, it can actually happen, whether it's in the urban fabric of Beirut or um, politically or socially. All of these things are at the, at the, at the tips of our fingers. Um, so that's, um, that's in a way, uh, the way I kind of approached uh, representation in my project. If, um, if, if I want to talk now about how to, how I want, what I want to emphasize, um, if I want to push this project further, I think it's a project, I mean, first of all, I think it's a project that I do want to pursue. I don't know when or how, um, but it's a project that I think uh, can develop quite uh, nicely. Um, what I think, I mean, the architectural, the architectural quality of it, so the physical quality of it is endlessly adaptable. So I can continue, continue talking and then um, conversing with, with architects, engineers, etc. Et for, for I don't know how long, like for, for a while. And I can continuously perfect that. But I think that when I th what I want to focus on more, if I want to push this further, is um, the talking with all these grassroots initiatives. Because in, the, in a way, um, it's a project for, not for them specifically, it's a project for the people of Beirut, but they're the most important um, element of this project. They're the, they're the link between um, people, between people themselves, between me and the people, between the project and the people. Um, and there are so many, so many of them, so many that I haven't spoken with, um, that can teach me a lot, that can bring so much more to the table. Um, so yeah, I think I think um, that's it. Um, I'm, I, I guess I still have a few more questions for you guys, but I'm also conscious that I'm just asking these questions on behalf of all of the people who are here to um, to also to want to know more about your project. So if anyone has any questions, if you want to post them in the chat, I can ask them on your behalf. Or if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you, which this whole muting thing is just for Zoom security. So I can unmute you and you can ask a question. So please, please do so. Um, but in the meantime, I can keep going. Um, <laughs> I guess... Um, I was also curious as to like what's next for each of you, which you may not fully know yet, but um, I remember finishing diploma and people saying to me that, you know, every future project I ever had was embedded in my diploma project, which um, I didn't fully think about until um, even now, years later, I realized that so many ideas, like even my most recent project is embedded in the project I did in fifth year, which is crazy to think about. Um, so I'm just curious as to like what, what is what's the future lives of, of this project but also like where does your career go from here um i think for the future of this project i speak for myself i don't know for the future <laughs> of this project there is a future that i see unfortunately i think because of the situation that we are in there's no like direct direct future like the, as in it is something that I'm continuing to pursue. I, I can't take it on full time. I need to, I, I am going, I'm starting a job next week. So, and, and the job I'm starting is very much in line with what I've been doing at the AA. And it's someone that I've been looking up to. And my work really looks like uh, their work. So I'm excited for that. But I'm having in the back of my mind, I have people I'm talking to. I have the ongoing research. I've, I'm pushing my um like that I'm pushing the democratization of this uh, system that I've done for this year. So not necessarily the design itself, but more a, a system of building that could be used and adapted uh, in these villages. So I'm, I think, wanting to see this revival of earth construction in our cultures. And I think this is a long-term project. Uh, I, I hope to see it one day 
come to life. Yeah, I would say we all hope that. <laughs> Zena or Philip? Zena? Go, go, go ahead. Philip. Okay. Um, no, yeah, as I mean, as Shaha mentioned, um, because of the situation in Lebanon, everything is kind of very volatile. So I don't know what will happen tomorrow or in a month or anything. So, I mean, for the, for, for the, for the future of the project itself, I mean, I want to work on it. I want to, I want to push for that, but um, I don't know if it's doable. I don't know if, I mean, there are a lot of challenges, but, um, and it's also quite urgent. So I don't know if that if I, if I wait a bit longer, I don't know if it will be that relevant as well. Um, but I think, I mean, yeah, it's still, it's still, they're all still question marks. But um, in terms of how this kind of influences my, my future career, um, I think both my years in diploma kind of established the fact that I want to work on socially oriented projects. I cannot, I don't have, I mean, I don't have the passion to do anything else. Um, I mean, <laughs> like it's, I, I, I just can't, I just literally can't. Um, I don't know if it's doable. I don't know how realistic this is. And this is probably like a long-term project. And then for the meantime, I'll just have to, to go back into like a normal architectural box and do like shopping centers yeah. or towers, or I don't know what we'll see. I don't know. I have no idea. We'll see. No, no Philip, it's perfectly possible. <laughs> you don't, yeah, no, don't just, need to compromise. No it's, no, it's complicated, but yeah. Yeah. We can have a chat, but um, anyway, but Zena, as your professional practice tutor, I, I know what your five-year plan was. So. <laughs> when I was speaking um, about people, I had no clue what I was going to do, and I still don't. <laughs> I think that's also okay. Like, I don't think you need to know exactly what you're going to do next, but I think it's about maybe... Um, Sometimes it's also just about knowing what you don't want to do or like, as, and as Philip was saying, he has to do a socially kind of driven architecture. Then you have to find the like-minded people who will enable you to do that in the starting at, at the start and then figure out a way to maybe set up your own thing or find ways in which you can continue to do that beyond the AA. And I think um, having spent all this time doing this, these, this incredible research and projects, it would be a shame to just kind of put it away and, and forget about it. And I don't, I don't think any of you will, but um I think it's it's important to maybe just I think that's a good way to figure out what to do to maybe think about what you don't want as much as what you do want. <laughs> you may not gonna answer the question. <laughs> um, no, I completely agree with what you were saying, Manjay. Like, um, I think if you're this is for the audience as well. Um, if any of you are interested in studying um, social and economic issues um, in the states, it's it's quite tricky to find a job or find something that you'd be interested in after you graduate so um but i would really stay firm like with manager which what she's saying you really need to find like like-minded people and stick with the vision um so for me for example i i am struggling a lot to find something that's similar like this in saudi and i would love to stay here because this is where i want to try to improve the situation um but sometimes I think you have to start on your own and start with the people like themselves, you know? So what I'm trying to do is just keep the connection open um, with all informal settlements and trying to speak to as many people as I can and trying to improve their living situation. And from there, hopefully it will grow. Uh, but all these, because they're urgent situations, on the contrary, I feel like we need to be working on these situations now. And yeah, but as for career-wise, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I find a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure we'll be following your careers for many years to come. But I think um, I think sometimes not knowing is also really exciting. I think the most depressing time in my career was when I could see the rest of my career for the like stretching out ahead of me and it, it kind of all looked the same. And now I have no idea what it would might be like in a year's time. And that's kind of exciting slash sometimes stressful. So I wouldn't always worry about that. I think that's okay. But um, I guess like we're kind of running out of time. So maybe to close, uh, we, I, I guess like, what does it mean having worked on this project um, to, to get kind of receive diploma with honors? Like, what does that mean personally, but also for your project? And I think Zena, you touched on this earlier because you said, like for these topics to be recognized in this way was really important. And I 
I think that that's, I think it's also what the school kind of puts forward as like the best projects from the last academic year. And for me, that was really great to see these four projects be be recognized due to the the kind of very difficult subject matters that it took on, which can't have been easy to work on for a whole for a whole year, and also to watch these situations unfold and sometimes feel helpless. Um, and so, yeah, just to close, I guess I was curious what you each felt. I think it's I think it's very rewarding. Um, the thing is, I mean, we're friends. The four of us are, are very close. It's it's uh, we are in the same group, and and I we're, I've worked with Philip for the whole year, and um, we can tell that. based on how you are almost like presenting each other's projects throughout this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's it's funny because actually, like speaking to Philip from the start of the year, I mean, we, we would have never seen ourselves here. Like we could have we couldn't even envisage ending the year let alone ending the year uh, with a recognition of our project, which is uh, quite spectacular and like um, a lot of amazing comments, a lot of, uh, it was very rewarding because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have thought of it one second, I think Philip or me, mm -hmm. uh, like seeing how, how we did for the whole year, how we started the year, how we kind of pushed each other to like the end of it. And I think it was the same with Jumana. She's not here, but um and and with Zena as well, because she was further. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite amazing to see that ending in this way. It's it's like a really big joy to finish uh, seven years for Philip and Zena and six years for me at AA in this way. Uh, I wish we could have been in the lecture hall all together yes. now, but <laughs> it's still a very big joy, I think, at least for me. Um, yeah, I mean, for me. I mean, I think both Zena and and Shaha know how much I doubt myself, my project, etc. So, I mean, getting a, this recognition kind of validated the fact that what I have to say is is I mean, it's valid. Um, um, so, I mean, it's on a personal level, yeah. It's I mean, it feels it feels it feels nice um, to finish like that because I mean, we did struggle a lot. Um, and I mean, we did talk a lot as well. So, I mean, it's, it was a nice, it was a nice, it was a really nice way to end. But on a more, on a more, I don't know, on a more satisfying level, I think what kind of honors brought to the table is exposure and conversation with people outside of the school. So, I mean, in the end, my, my honors was awarded by people in London that do not necessarily know exactly how the context is in Lebanon. Um, and I was always the one narrating the story. So, I mean, it's easily bought. Um, but then what the honors did is that um, my project started being shared on social media and then people reaching out to me and then telling me that, um, yeah, it's a really good project. You should push for it. Uh, let me know if, I mean, I had a lot of people that kind of offered their help and their support for to push this project further. And this was the most rewarding part because I mean, these are people that the project, the project, I mean, addresses, it mm. talks to them, it's for them. And getting this recognition as well is, I think, I mean, no, not to offend anyone, but I think it's it's much more rewarding than having the honors because I mean, um, they, can, they can sense what's bullshit and what's not. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah. Um. Uh, also, yeah, exactly what Shahan Philip said, and as well to the audience and the students. Like, uh, I couldn't, I personally didn't find my passion and what I loved, or I guess what I loved most about architecture until fifth year. So you kind of feel like uh, a bit lost during A. You might feel that, you might not, maybe from first year, you know where your path is. But um, so it was really, I think rewarding to finally know what I really love doing within architecture and being actually awarded for it. And uh, what's what's most validating as well is the fact that um, I spoke on behalf of other individuals who need a voice, you know, and uh, we have the privilege of being able to present our work always, but some people aren't. So I think in all of our cases, we were able to speak on on behalf of communities and actually visualize and materialize and so on our, our projects and to be awarded for that is just so much respect for our communities and I'm sure um, people who, who have asked who have awarded us and want to publish our work or so on they all want uh, to see projects that improve 
all of these situations. So it's, it's really respectful and I admire all the recognition and respect it, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess to close, I just want to say that um, it, it's been incredible, I guess, to both experience your projects, but also to hear you speak so articulately, but also hopefully about a kind of a different future for the context in which you've been operating and that you obviously so deeply care about. And um, I know from witnessing Jumana work on her project over the year, especially with all of the political events that unfolded just quite close to the end of the year, um, it, I was really impressed that while probably like I would have fallen apart in her position, it kind of channeled her forward and, and energized her to kind of deliver an even better project um, that kind of even blew, blew me away. Like I, like it, it went beyond even my expectations. So um, I think all of you really did that throughout, like, and, and, and took on this responsibility. So very, four very fitting projects to be recognized, I think. And um, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see all that you achieve and continue to change in the world around you going forward. So you have to keep in touch. And since we couldn't be in the lecture hall today, you'll have to come back so I can take you all out to some sort of lunch. And, um, and you know, I, as uh, all your new students won't know, but I'm always the person like chasing you to come to the lecture in the lecture hall. So hopefully I'll be doing that soon um, before long. Um, but in the meantime, we'll be doing some more of these events on, on Zoom, which are easier to join. But um, yeah, Shaha, Philip, Zena, thank you so much um, you for, for joining us and for sharing your work and also the experience of working on these projects. Um, since we are stuck on Zoom, I'm going to do a mass unmute so you can get a round of applause, hopefully. Um, so let me just figure out how to do that. Also, David Green commented really nice. I would also like to ask something. Okay, yeah, go for it. I was unmuted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there is something uh, so strong about the fact that you chose to um, do a project on, like, from this very subjective place that you come from these places. So I want to ask if it's something that you think is saved for just the place that I come from um, to have this strong quality um and familiar familiarity um if that i i hope it's a question um i think i mean i, I it's it's much more challenge i mean i think it's much more challenging to work on a project in a context that you're very familiar with because at least in my experience you're much more um you're much more rigorous and much more um demanding of yourself so you don't allow yourself to 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 bullshit through your project. I mean, I don't think it's. I mean, doing um, good project. I don't think that's uh, specific to uh, whatever context you're, you're you're familiar with. You can have amazing con uh, projects wherever, um, and relevant, etc. But I think, I mean, for us, in my experience, for I mean, I was at least. I was, trying not to do anything in Lebanon um, for my whole experience at DAA until my fifth year, because it's the only time where I was comfortable enough doing it. Comfortable as in, I know enough about it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do that. And I mean, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just what I need to do at this point. Um, but I mean, don't, I don't think you should pressure yourself to do something from wherever you come from. Um, I think that you can have a great project wherever. If I mean you're interested in the topic you're 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 dealing with, mm -hmm. but I mean obviously it does help if you're really passionate about something where you come from. But I mean it's not it's not it's not uh, yeah I don't know. No? Yeah no I agree I agree <laughs> I agree I think uh, I think it's tough to do a personal project as well because mm. you're the only judge yeah, it's only mm. between you and yourself so. No one is going to go the situation know the situation better than you, so mm -hmm. it's kind of frustrating because it's a back and forth between yourself and some friends that are from the same area. Yeah. But it's also very uh, it's very satisfying because you have a, you you get a new lens uh, <clears throat> to the place through like you see the place through a new lens, which is the lens of your project and a brief that you're trying to um, to build. Uh, but. I don't know. It's, so it's, I, I do think that um, that it's interesting to think that the place you come from dictates very much uh, subject that burns inside of you. Um, so yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's, I don't know, I think, Philip, you said it, that you're not, maybe not always ready to deal with that. Yeah. Um, and it's sometimes about just waiting till you do feel ready to do a project on that. And then, but it does in some way shape probably all the projects that you do. Yeah, it, do, it does. I mean, all my projects before that, I mean, not all of them, but even my fourth year project was um, informed by my identity and how I, I mean, my, my, my quest to understanding who I am. And it was, it has, it had nothing to do with Lebanon, mm. um, but I mean, underlying, yeah. Um, yeah. Dana, did you want to add? Anything? I think you said it all, but the most important thing is really just finding a topic that you're really passionate about. It doesn't need, need to come yeah. from where you come from. It, it could be like Philip said, like just, um, uh, sort of just showing your identity it could be through where you come from. It could be something else. So just choose something you're really passionate about and it will come really organically and naturally really well. Great. Um, well, we can now give you a round of applause, but um, David Green has suggested in the chat that we should have a debate about what it means to be an architect. And I think that's very overdue because um, I think now more than ever, I think we get trained as architects to really think about the world around us and to question it and um, to communicate with so many other disciplines and people. And so we can't be limited to just building buildings. So yeah, let's watch this space. This conversation will happen soon. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Manager, yeah. so much for having us. Thanks to everyone that came. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>